You are listening to Panther Tracks. It's time to get all your Star Wars news in a single file. This is Cannon Fodder. Grab your bookmarks, it's time to take cover as we unleash the cannon fodder over the Star Wars galaxy of literature. On this special edition of the show, my co-host Mark Newbold talks to Nick Brokenshire about his writing and art for the new ongoing comic series from IDW, Star Wars Adventures. Brokenshire has also worked on Dark Horse Comics, The Once and Future Queen, Heavy Metal, 2000 AD and Judge Dredd for IDW, as well as Robotech for Titan. Over to Mark and Nick as they discuss Tales of Villainy, Invasion of Echo Base from issue one of the new ongoing series. Star Wars Adventures, it's rebooted, it's gone back to issue one. You take us back to the Battle of Hoth right in the thick of the Empire Strikes Back. It was initially, before we settled on that story, um, they had asked me to come up with uh, things that, that would connect Star Wars, well, A New Hope, to Empire, because of because you know we're celebrating Empire's 40th. Yeah. So I, I came up with lots of little weird vignettes based on kind of background characters but then they came back to me and they said well why don't you try something like actually connected to the the goings on in Empire and they just said what about something in Hoth and I was like well that's really tricky because that's like asking to play with actual canon and and what we what we write actually is in canon but to be asked to play with that particular section of the story is somewhat intimidating but they said give it a go so um very excited to do it and and actually really quickly i started to get the ideas and started to see all these parallels between anakin and luke so mm. that's the tack that i took and they you know they loved it they loved the idea i'm not surprised i mean i'd never even considered the, the reviews just gone on panther tracks as as we're talking now and mm-hmm. the, the parallel between anakin on the shores of mustafar and luke in the on the sort of the wastes of Hoth, both reaching out to Obi-Wan. I'd never even put those two moments together. That was a really cleverly observed little moment. It literally came to me as I was thinking about it, because like um, I was just scribbling loads of ideas down. I was going through, in fact, I was going through the Hoth attack scene just frame by frame. I was just yeah. watching it and looking at all the sections and just thinking, what's going on, you know, around here and just asking the question, you know, what was Vader up to during this point and blah, blah, blah. And um, yeah, it just occurred to me as I was writing. Yeah. Um, it, it, and it, it sprang from the visuals, obviously, you know, the bit where Luke is in the snow. It just hit me. I was just like, wow, that's like when Anakin was on the on the shores of Mustafar. And when I actually put it to Lucasfilm, they were a wee bit concerned that we not put them as specifically force visions. They were more just literal flashbacks or memories. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. R- yeah, ra- yeah. rather than it be sort of interfering with canon in terms yeah. of what Vader was thinking, what we're doing is actually just seeing parallels that would be literally connected to his memories. Um, whether he could see Luke in the snow or not in th- through the force, we don't know. No. But we can see it. It was neat as well, you also paralleled Luke in the back to tank with Anakin in the back to tank, which, you know, again, it's it's one of those thoughts that you don't necessarily put the two together because they feel like different machineries, but they're really not. And that, so that was a nice yeah. little parallel as well. Yeah, absolutely. Again, just the visual of it just hit me. And it's funny because uh, I don't know if you noticed in the strip, there's that little scene is kind of color coded, you know. Mm. So mm. you've got like Luke in the back to tank, Anakin in the back to tank, and they're two different colors. When I first was showing them the artwork they were like well you know but the, the back to is not that color and it's like no but you know it's like a visual signifier yeah. two different places but yeah it was fun to come up with that definitely it's, you saying about how you were going through it frame by frame it strikes me as a very sort of west end games thing to do because you think back in the day when you would watch in empire when you see the attacks advancing an echo base you saw that one guy at the bottom of the frame running yeah. and the attack clips him he gets hit and, you, and you yeah. know, just before he drops his battle leg and takes out <laughs> the generator and there's all those little moments where 
well, West End, for example, would pick up that character and give him a background story. And, yeah. you know, you going through trying to find little little corridors and doorways to fit in your little vignettes, like you say. It must mm-hmm. have been quite a challenge to try and work it so it organically fits, because it really does organically fit. It was all about timing. Basically, I would put the scene on as the scene was going. I was timing things in my head. You know, the bit where Vader lands and bursts through the door. There's a couple of beats in, in the movie, and then there's the bit where you hear over the intercom, the Imperials have entered the base. I was basically counting seconds and kind of envisioning what what was happening, you know. Mm. And so, in theory, the comics medium is all about the timing that you put onto the thing. But, yeah. like, in theory, you should be able to kind of watch the scene and read the comic and kind of intersperse what's going on with what you're reading in the comic, if you see what I mean. Put the scene on and then just stick it in there and timing-wise, it should be just as fast. We're so familiar, I say in the review, we're so familiar with the beats of that Battle of Hoth, especially because it's Empire and because the big action scene comes at the start of the film, so you're right into it. Just yeah. to drop in, and you drop in some lovely little grace notes like you see the back of 3 POs is running away. He's clearly peeled the sign off the door when, when the snow trooper goes in. Just little touches yeah. like that, you know, so you're touching on cut scenes that we kind of know happened, we just didn't see, and, and just yeah. little moments like that. But it was uh, it was beautifully observed. One question I've got, you're, and I, I said it in this review, and I've already reviewed the annual that's coming out uh, in November, and okay. I make a similar point in there, in that your art style, your general vibe, to me, mm. has that early to mid 80s sort of British style like a 2000 AD style I know you you do work for 2000 AD it's got that kind of vibe about it and that's that feel where did your style develop from? Definitely the 2000 AD like yourself grew up on in the comics that we had in this country so I, I loved things like Eagle as well remember the yeah. the, re, the restarted Eagle in the early 80s a lot of people comment on my colour choices and I base a lot of what I do on you know Ian Kennedy the artist Ian yeah. Kennedy yeah, he yeah. did a lot of the Dan Dare stuff in Eagle, uh, among other things. And he always used very bright colours. So even if a scene was dark, like in space or whatever, he still used the medium of, of comics in a, in a bright and clear fashion. I like that, you know. My influences are all those British guys, Ian Kennedy, Cam Kennedy, but yeah. I, I, also, I also discovered Mobius very young. Clarity, you know what I mean? Clarity and a certain amount of detail. That's kind of what I'm going for, but sometimes, depending on the job, like in other books, when I was doing the old Amelia Cole series uh, yeah. back years and years ago, when I was really learning how to make comics, I was trying to reference more people like Mike Alred and things like that, you know, but in, in my cack handed way, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, it just kind of depends. Like it, a, a lot of it also depends on what you're reading at the time. With this uh, Star Wars Adventures one, I was really trying to kind of capture the color of that whole scene, that lovely hazy blue that was going on during the Hoth battle scene. Like yeah. there's these beautiful greens and blues going on. So I, I just wanted that to be the, the, the dominant vibe. Whilst at the same time inserting a, a couple of little bits of my own, like that flashback scene with all the color coded seat bits in it. It definitely, but back to the old school British comics for me, has yeah. to be said. It works well because because it's paired up with the Marco Morici story at the start of mm-hmm. the issue as well. The two really do bounce off each other well because that is a bit more lighthearted and whimsical almost. It, very much more an IDW style story yeah. that you would expect. And, and yours could have sat an early 80s Marvel comic. It's got that Tales of the Watcher vibe about it. Yeah. And, and, and speaking of that, and we won't go into it in too much detail, I'm sure we'll talk about it down the line you've got Ooh. the 2020 annual coming out you've got a story in there that really does have that vibe about it give us a little tease about what you've got coming up in the annual they gave me a little bit more leeway with that one they said okay go, go crazy and i thought right you you've asked for it <laughs> yeah <laughs> one of the the kind of mandates um for the new star wars adventures including the the annual is where previously the 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 series had been skewed younger we're sort of skewing it slightly older now mm. so we're kind Kind of imagining that the readers of Star Wars Adventures from a couple of years ago are a little bit older now. 
but they still want to read it. Yeah. So we're kind of moving with the times a little there. And uh, so, so my story in the annual is introducing characters and concepts that you will not have seen specifically in the Disney era of Star Wars, but they fit in because they're, they're sort of background characters, but they're definitely, I'm definitely introducing some concepts that you will not have encountered, I think. Yeah. Um, but certainly visually, it, it is like you say, playing around with a little bit of the old school approach to, to visuals, quite bright iconographic as opposed to regular storytelling so that there's bits in there where you'll have to kind of figure out what you're looking at we don't want to dumb down the stories you know we want to we want to we want to make people of all ages get stuck into some of this stuff and i think star wars is such a huge universe that we we can get away with things like that back in if there's american listeners recommend you go back and and have a look at them or pick up the devil worlds series that dark horse did us uk readers had stories that weren't in the american issues back in the day you know we had some alan moore stuff and there was some interesting stuff in there that other people didn't get and and again this story has that kind of tone about it but it works so well because star wars is a big church isn't it It, you know you can touch Mm. on a lot of vibes and a lot of styles yeah and I think as well, a lot of the modern day fans or, or, or fans that have allowed themselves to be swept along by the way things are done these days, you know, they'll have encountered this approach to storytelling in books like the Certain Point of View book, yeah. in prose, even like just the approach to trying to understand the characters in Star Wars in books like Bloodlines and even like the Chuck Wendig stuff. We're exploring more, I think, about the, the actual characters. So I think the some of the things in the EU kind of explored the surface of the characters and just gave them lots of adventures, lots of new adventures back yeah. in the day. Yeah. But the, it seems like the new books are really trying to get to the meat of the characters more. Uh, and therefore, as far as I'm concerned, that gives us license to deal with things that you might not have thought about, like why is IG-88 doing all the things he's doing? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and de- deal with that, you know? Oh, uh, I'm going to say, in, in, the, in the most positive way I could possibly say, it reminded me of that Tales of the Bounty and the story oh, from yeah. back in the day so in a very good way so yeah we, we'll, we will definitely talk about that in more detail but right yeah. now it's october we're yeah. returning to vader's castle you're involved mm-hmm. give us a bit of a flavor of what's coming up there cabin scott's baby again like he's the master of these uh, little almost hammer horror-esque um <laughs> vignettes uh, in within the star wars universe i just think it's perfect i think it's genius mm-hmm. how he uses this framing thing of vader's castle as a, a means to tell stories that help us understand these characters more it, it, this year it's just a single big issue rather than a mini series um my part of it is let's see i haven't shown you it yet but it's crackers it's absolutely <laughs> bananas and f- yeah it's weird it's really really strange but in uh, vader's in it i can tell you that vader's in my section of the story vader himself and he's just you know that you know that vader that like um quips while he's killing you <laughs> yes yes, yes. <laughs> that, that's the vader i've got in my story so um so yeah like you know apology accepted all that business that's yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm dealing with in that story. For everything in one location, daily news, reviews, interviews, podcasts, video, and social media feeds, bookmark fathatracks.com for Star Wars news 24-7, 365. Do you dig drawing in because you, you absolutely nailed it in the Empire Battle of Hoth? Echo Base Invasion story in Star Wars Adventures 1. So do you like drawing Vader? Oh, very much, very much. You can only do it if you've got reference. There's no way you can't do it with reference <laughs> um, because the design of the helmet in 3D is is absolutely crazy. Like the, the planes that are going on, like the 3D planes that are going on in his helmet are so bonkers that yeah. you have to have uh, reference. So it's a, it's a case of balancing reference with the kind of movement that you can achieve in comics because... If you adhere too closely to reference, then you're just going to make it look very staid and yeah. lumpen. So, like, like there's a scene where he's um, levitating a rebel 
soldier and yeah. like I, I love drawing that because he's kind of a little bit uh, sort of distracted while he's doing it and things like that just yeah. loads and loads of fun and also because he's in black so much then I can get away with leaving things out <laughs> I just I just fill it in in black yeah um, but yeah it's so much fun to draw and the, the most fun were were the snow troopers I don't know about you but like when I first saw those guys back in 80 81 it was like yes you know yeah. who are these guys and drawing them was as much fun as it was to watch them you know it's really funny fun. it's funny now when we've got comics and books and tv shows and animated stuff and movies with so many armored characters turning up mm-hmm. you know we're used to seeing new armor in every film now but you kind of forget that we only had storm troopers and a sand trooper yeah. had a red thing on his shoulder you know and then a biker's yeah. got, you know and there was so few really you look at the original <laughs> imperial army with oh, so yeah. few different types so like you say yeah when that snow trooper turned up it was like what the heck is this yeah there was so much much fun yeah and drawing them like in this strip it felt like in my head i'm just looking at it now it, i just kind of weirdly got into their heads a little bit and i was like they, they reminded me of um i can't remember it might have been is it stripes you know the bill murray film oh, i love that film yeah you know, when they're all running around going hup, 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 you know yeah. and uh, i just kind of had that going on in my head um <laughs> while they <laughs> while vader's like shouting at them and they're yeah. running around trying to get it done yeah that's fun. a good analogy because it came out about the same time didn't it i think Stripes was about 81 wasn't it so yeah <laughs> <laughs> so outside of Star Wars what else have you got going on I um ooh, well I've got um, a super duper secret series that I'm working on with a, a very well known writer which will be hopefully announced soon I can't really say anything um, I'm also uh, wor- working on um, it's a project it's a long term project which is coming to fruition now it's a thing called She's Not There right. with uh, a writer called Ellis Bojar so we'll be finishing that early next year sort of yeah early next year and hopefully getting that out by the end of next year it's a it comics it takes ages to get things done that that's a sort of um that's actually kind of a, a lovecraftian horror set in in the north of england in the late 70s oh no, early 70s yeah so that's coming out next year um as well as this other thing which is yet to be announced but i will be i am working on other star wars things as well keep on the lookout for for star wars things for me we definitely will we definitely will thank you for giving us your time today thank you mark pleasure and we'll speak again soon when we can we'll talk a bit more about vader's castle we'll talk a bit more about the annual but uh, thanks for dropping by thank you matey Thanks for listening to Cara Potter. If you want to be part of the action and stay updated on all the latest Star Wars news, visit Fantatracks.com and download the Fantatracks app to follow us on your mobile device. You can reach out to us and send in your listeners' questions by emailing radio at Fantatracks.com. And remember to comment, like, share and subscribe on all our social medias at Fantatracks. Leave a review, preferably a five-star one, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or your podcaster or smart speaker of choice. Coming up next on Fantha Tracks Radio, it's Making Tracks. <laughs>